Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge, the Bugman, and I'm coming to you from Bugman headquarters in the studio. And today we're going to talk about what makes insects so critically important to everything on the planet. That's you, that's me, that's everything else living here. We all need insects, like them or not. Look, if you don't know who I am, my name's Ryan Bridge. People call me the Bugman. I go to schools and churches and libraries and birthday parties and all kinds of cool places. What I do, I go out and I teach people all about bugs and insects and cool creepy stuff. That's what I do for a living. And today we're talking about why insects and bugs and all that creepy stuff are all so critically important to the planet. We're gonna start nice and simple. We're gonna go right to the thing with my audiences, the people I talk to the most. Look, they hate cockroaches. We're gonna talk about cockroaches. Check it out. Cockroaches. These are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. They're some of the largest cockroaches on the planet. They live in the rainforest and they live up in trees. Yeah, there's no biting, there's no stinging, nothing bad about cockroaches. Look, I understand people like to hate cockroaches. We're told our whole lives that we should hate cockroaches. Cockroaches aren't so bad. They don't carry diseases. They're not gross or dirty or disgusting. Look how beautiful those things are. They look like polished wood. They feel like leather. They don't smell. They don't make any noise, you know, respectively speaking. They might hiss a little bit, but that's a defense. No matter how much you hate cockroaches, people need to understand that they're not the bad things that we're led to believe. People choose to hate bugs and insects because bugs and insects, even cockroaches, are still very, very critically important to the universe. All right, or at least to the planet for sure. So there you go, to my universe, I love them. Let's talk about ants. Ants are also very important to the planet. Ants, they're just ants, no big deal. We see ants, you probably have them in your house. If you're like me, you have them in your house a lot, especially those little sugar ants. Look, dude, Ants are going to take over this planet. They already own most of it already. Ants are all over the world. And they're in with the bees and the wasps and the hornets. Ants are not their own little insect. Ants are actually a wasp. And their job is to control insect populations. They're to control the numbers. They help to keep insects in balance. Nature likes to have balance. Doesn't like things getting out of control. Too many insects is not a good thing. And ants are on the planet to do that. We can take it to an extreme though. We can look at bullet ants. Yeah, man, these are bullet ants. And they're notorious for having a really bad sting. Everybody on the internet likes to talk about bullet ants. Look, only the females, bees, wasps, ants, and hornets can sting you. And they're stinging not because they don't like people in that same sense. We take it personal when bugs bite us or sting us. But bullet ants are going to sting you no differently than another wasp or a hornet. And they're going to do that because you're a threat. But their job is the same as the little guys. Their job is to keep the insect populations in check. That's why ants are here. So like them or hate them, they have a good cause. They're very, very important to the planet. Let's talk about flies. And this is kind of cool because I don't think people realize flies can be predators. They can be parasitic. These are tachyna flies. And tachyna flies will lay their eggs on a caterpillar and those eggs will hatch and the, the grubs, the maggots, if you will, of the flies will live inside the caterpillar. They'll eventually form a chrysalis or a pupa, and then that adult fly comes out. In some cases, the caterpillars can go all the way to their chrysalis or to their, or to their pupa, and then they will die, and then the wasp or the fly will come out of those pupa and out of those chrysalis. And I've got them here in cocoons. I've got them in chrysalis or butterflies. I've got them in all kinds of cool stuff. But flies are important, no doubt. Flies are very, very important. Now, have you ever seen those tomato worms? Yeah, most people, if you have a garden with tomatoes, you're going to have worms on there. And those big green worms turn into this cool sphinx moth. 
This is the six the six spotted hawk moth. This is the tomato hornworm, and this moth is going to fly around at night and pollinate flowers. How cool is that? So the the caterpillar that's eating your tomatoes is going to turn into a moth that will pollinate your petunias and your trumpet vines and your mimosa trees and fun things like that. Now the caterpillar, the caterpillar of this moth also has a cool little wasp called a brachinid wasp that will attack it. And the brachinid wasps are those tiny, tiny, tiny little wasps that you see there on those triangles. And those brachinid wasps will lay their eggs on the caterpillar the eggs hatch and the wasp larva will crawl inside and live inside the caterpillar and eventually form those cool little silken cocoons. Those are not eggs. Those are cocoons that these wasps will then hatch out. And they'll fly around your tomato garden and they'll find more tomato hornworms and continue to protect your tomatoes. So don't, you know, if you like your tomato plants, don't get rid of the larvae that have the cocoons on them. Keep those larvae around. And that's what I like to do. I like to rescue the larvae before the wasps get to them. And try to rear those out. But the ones that the ones that are on there with the cocoons, I leave them on there. Because they're helping protect your tomatoes. So that's a good thing. That's a good reason to like an insect right there. If you like your tomato gardens. Look, butterflies can also be pollinators, that's for sure. Moths and butterflies. Here's some day flying hummingbird, bumblebee moths that are also going to be cruising around on your flowers and pollinating. So pollination is a good thing. Most people understand that. Butterflies and moths are going to pollinate. Beetles, beetles are your number one pollinators, but these, these are carrion beetles. These go out and they clean up dead animals. How cool is that? Somebody's got to do it. I'm not going to do it. So these are the carrion beetles. Then there's also the dung beetles. Dung beetles go clean up animal poop. So pollination, dead animals, and animal poop. Those are good reasons to like beetles. Look, there's even an elephant dung beetle. This dude lives in Africa. Follows elephants around. Look at the size difference between us. If you're going to clean up big, humongous piles of elephant poop, you got to be a big beetle to get the job done. Kind of neat. All right, what, don't like stink bugs? Well, not all stink bugs are bad. Check it out. Here's your two, your brown and your green native stink bugs. And these things will go out and they'll prey on caterpillars and things. These two particular though, aren't gonna do that. These two are gonna go out and feed on plants. The brown one I've seen on occasion are some brown ones out there that'll feed on, that are predatory. They'll feed on caterpillars. So they're good to have around. Now the brown marmorated stink bug, if you like brown marmorated stink bugs, well, then you can have them all because they're invasive. They don't belong here. So that's why I didn't put them in this box. But there is a large predatory stink bug from Papua New Guinea. Check this thing out. It's as big. <laughs> it's as big as my thumb. That's the largest stink bug in the world. It comes out of Papua New Guinea. And it's a predator. It runs around and it picks up other insects, mostly soft-bodied stuff. Cool stuff. You know, look, we also have ladybugs. Everybody understands ladybugs are good. Most people love ladybugs for all the right reasons. And we know they're voracious on aphids, both as larva and as adult, are gonna feed on aphids. Here's another beetle that's pretty cool. It's the Vidalia beetle. And it's gonna go and it's gonna find scale insects and specifically the cottony maple, which is tough to get a look at there because they're sort of a cool insect. Not often seen if you're a gardener, you kind of know a little bit about those. Another one we need to talk about is the wheel bug. Guys, this is a classic predator. And people see these all the time and then they, you know, they hit me up on Facebook or whatever and they, they want to know what these things are. As an immature, it's going to be bright red and black. It's going to advertise that they can bite. They have a really, really vicious sting, if you will. Look at that proboscis, man. That's the kind of thing that comes from horror stories. They're going to stab that into their prey and then they're going to suck fluids out of the prey. That gear-like thorax is very cool. That gives them their trademark. And they don't get that until they're an adult. So don't expect to see these things when they're, you know, until they're brown, you're not going to see that 
that gear like wheel that gives them their trade their trademark name all right let's talk about some other you know pretty pretty common pretty popular pollinators let's talk about a honeybee now you're gonna like honeybees for all the right reasons of course they pollinate and they also make honey you can also dislike honeybees for all the right reasons and that is that they're just they're non-native they don't really belong here they take up the niche of a few other native pollinators around but people like honey so we do everything we can to keep the honeybee around so it is what it is you like them or you hate them pick your battles bumblebees bumblebees are very very cool they're native and they're also one of your primary pollinators of a lot of your vegetables so we like to have bumblebees around cool stuff all right so you understand look let me take you one step further let's talk about cicadas cicadas the annual cicada these are the guys that come out every year a lot of people call them locusts, but a locust is actually a grasshopper. These are cicadas. They're the ones that leave the brown shells behind. And cicadas are cool, and they come out every year. Guess what? They come out sometimes in big numbers, and I'm not talking a 17-year cicada yet. I'm talking about the annual cicada. They come out in some pretty big numbers, and nature has a way of dealing with them. The way to deal with them is the cicada killer hornet. This hornet goes out and it hunts down cicadas. And here again, females, female bees, wasps, ants, hornets are the only ones that are going to sting you. And the female cicada killer will sting that cicada. It doesn't kill it. It just paralyzes it. They then pick it up just like this. They carry it back to a burrow that they've dug into the ground. They put it down in a burrow and they lay an egg on it. And that egg hatches. And the cicada killer grub is going to feed on that cicada and go through its life cycle. And then eventually that adult cicada killer hornet is going to dig its way to the top and go do the whole thing all over again. Very, very cool stuff. Nature is super cool, super efficient, and even has a, a hornet that is out there cleaning up the cicadas. Now, we talk about the 17-year cicada. And here's the thing about the 17-year cicada, outside of the fact that it comes out about every 17 years, and there's some off-cycle hatches as well, but here's the thing. These things generally come out in huge, massive numbers, two, three, four inches thick on the ground. If you've never seen a 17-year cicada hatch, you need to go put that on your bucket list. You need to go experience that. It is pretty phenomenal. I've seen you know several of them. Now, these things are cool, but the cicada killer is not on track to deal with the 17-year cicadas, okay? The 17-year cicada comes out a little earlier in the season, so there really isn't, other than fish and birds and animals, which are going to gobble these things up by the millions, there's no real cicada killers out at that time of the year to take care of the 17-year cicada. So don't count on this guy. He's on track just to take care of your annual cicadas, and that's how they line themselves up. Nature's like that. Nature is very good and very efficient, and nature likes to get it done right. Let's get down here to the floor once. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about aquatic insects, specifically beetles. These are all aquatic beetles. These are beetles that live in the water. Go figure. Now, if you live in the water, obviously, you're going to be feeding everything in that water. So you're going to be feeding the fish and the ducks and the you know animals that may be swimming in there possibly but definitely a lot of the insects are going to be eating all these aquatic beetles so even if your job is to eat algae or maybe if you're a scavenger and you're going to eat worms and other things that live in the water which is what these beetles do they go and they scavenge some of the larger things their job still remains the same just like all the insects they're just feeding the food chain. The number one job of insects is feeding the food chain on the planet. Everything bigger than an insect is going to do it. Let's move to the dragonflies and damselflies. Dragonflies and damselflies are super, super cool. Dragonflies are some of the fastest flying insects on the planet. I think there's one clocked right now. I think the fastest they got him going was like 64 miles an hour. Something crazy like that. Imagine zipping at 65 miles an hour down the highway and there's a dragonfly that can almost keep up with you. That is amazing. Dragonflies 
are right up there in that top feeder of these guys are you know they're predators on mosquitoes so they're right up there with the bats and the spiders eating mosquitoes dragonflies number one food is mosquitoes they'll also take on other insects as well but generally they're after the mosquitoes so a lot of times you'll see these larger darners and these things the larger dragonflies are going to come out right at dusk and start cruising around just as it's dark just as the mosquitoes come out damselflies very small very dainty if you will their larvae their, or i'm sorry their nymphs are going to feed on algae in a lot of cases when they're when they're in the, in the water and then when they hatch out a lot of times these adult dragonflies or dry, adult damselflies sorry are going to feed on either uh, small mosquitoes and things or in some cases they don't eat at all very very cool stuff now go to the tropics all the rules change check it out you've got two of the largest damselflies in the world and there's something kind of neat about these two this one's got this super neat long abdomen going on and this one coming out of costa rica well he's a little more special because this one this cool damselfly coming out of costa rica he's going to hover in front of spider webs and when the spider moves and gives away his his position this damselfly is going to dive into that spider web grab that spider rip him out of the web fly away with him and eat him how cool is that it's a predatory damselfly that eats spiders right out of the web nature is so cool how can you not dig a, a damselfly that's going to go out and eat a spider that's pretty neat let's look at some other aquatic bugs because you know what again if you're in the water not only are you a predator but you're also prey because the fish and anything larger than you is probably going to try and eat you these are the what are known as toe biters which is a terrible terrible name to give any insect because man they're they really don't bite your toes they're more apt to bite you in the hand or bite you on the inside of the mouth if you pop your pop one in your mouth which nobody should be doing with those because that would probably hurt but these are just some of the neat neat aquatic bugs that you're going to find that are out there helping to feed the food chain and it gets even bigger because you know insects come in all shapes all sizes and these are the giant water bugs these things are pretty common right here in pennsylvania where i live their typical food is going to be insects and small fish. Uh, these particular giant water bugs, uh, I've kept them in captivity several times, and they love crayfish. They absolutely love to eat crayfish. They'll actually go to the bottom of the aquariums, and they'll hunt and stalk crayfish. Very, very cool. And they get amazingly big when you get into the tropics. And this particular one right there that big dude right here he's so big he can eat small snakes he can eat fish up to six to eight inches long that is one of the largest species of giant water bugs on the planet and look how much bigger he is than these guys he can get you an idea Man, that's my finger up against up against this one that's my finger against this one that's just crazy how big those things are they're they're just insane big so aquatic bugs they got it going on too man because they're feeding the food chain and they're also predators at the same time cool stuff now let's take a step and let's talk about spiders especially tarantulas did you know that there's a, a wasp that will hunt tarantulas this is the tarantula hawk and tarantula hawks are notorious not only for having a really, really serious sting, but at the same time, the female tarantula hawks, because again, here again, man, females, bees, wasps, ants, hornets, they're the only ones that are stinging anybody. They're going to go out sometimes even at night, and they're going to hunt tarantulas. And when they find a tarantula, they're going to sting it. Now, remember, if you've ever hurt a spider or, or seen a spider when it gets you know injured or killed, First thing they do, they roll over on their back and they curl their legs up. Well, guess what that does? That makes a perfect carrying package for the tarantula hawk. So they sting the spider, paralyze it, 
they pick it up and they will carry it and fly it back to their burrow. And just like that cicada killer does, they'll put these tarantulas down into the burrow, they'll lay an egg on them, seal it up, and they'll let the spider get consumed by the wasp grub. And then eventually, later on in the season, or usually that following season, that fresh adult wasp will dig its way up out of the ground. Super, super cool. Nature has a neat way of dealing with tarantulas. And this is how nature keeps the tarantula population in check. It makes sure that there's a wasp that goes out and hunts them. Now, what about large tarantulas? Really big ones. We'll take a bird eater. That's not a bird eater for what it's worth. But let's take a bird eater tarantula. They get as big as a dinner plate for crying out loud. That's a big spider. Even this rosary right here is a huge spider. And for something like that to try and pick this thing up is just not going to happen. So if the spider's too big, a lot of times they'll just drag it. But you know what? When you go to Costa Rica, when you get into the tropics, there's, there's a tarantula hawk that is built for these big tarantulas. And there he is. Or in this case, there she is. There is a huge tarantula hawk that nature has figured out in order to go hunt down the huge tarantulas. So even the big spiders still have to get, you know, they still have to be worried about these predators coming in and taking them out. And this is how nature deals with itself. It keeps insects in check. What an awesome, awesome tarantula hawk just massive again there's my hand on the down next to this thing gives an idea of the size of that thing it's bigger than my thumb insane but also insanely cool so you got you have insects that are out there taking care of spiders you have insects out there that are taking care of fish and even maybe small snakes you have insects out there that are being consumed by everything from fish to birds to waterfowl you've got damselflies taking out spiders how cool is nature when it comes to insects? How cool is nature when it comes to insects taking care of the planet? Guys, we need them. You don't have to like all the insects out there. You don't have to like the ticks and you don't have to like, you know, bed bugs. You don't have to like those things, but understand they have a niche. Even if it's something that we don't really understand they're here for a purpose, they're here for a reason. And like them or not, we all need them. Even those cockroaches. We need cockroaches too. How cool is that, man? Cockroaches are neat. I like cockroaches, hopefully you do too. Guys, no matter how you look at it, insects are really, really critically important to the world. Everybody needs, everybody needs insects. We need them to survive. Your gardens won't survive without insects. We can't get a, the food that we eat without insects. The planet needs these things. So cut them a little bit of slack. Recognize that we need insects to survive. Okay, if, if you like what you see here, if you like what's going on, you know what? Hit up my website, ryanthebugman.com. ryanthebugman.com. Go on that contact page, let me know. Keep sending your questions too, guys. You guys are doing awesome. I love you guys. You're doing awesome. You give me you give me content. You give me things that I know you guys want to talk about, you guys want to hear. That helps. That helps a lot. You know, you can find me on YouTube. Get on YouTube, man. There's videos there. Stuff you don't see here, you're also going to see over there. And that's, that's very cool. Get on there and subscribe. Let me know you like those things too. But either way, every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday at 1 p.m., you can find me right here in the studio talking about bugs and insects and cool, creepy stuff because that's what I do. Guys, it's Ryan the Bug Man. I hope you had a great day. It's an angry world out there, man. All right? You know how it is. You got to be well. Please be safe. And man, let's all be kind to each other. But you know what? Be here every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday at 1 p.m. Guys, take care. Have a great day.